In this tutorial, we're going to use Maya and Adobe After Effects to create and composite an explosion. The final product will look something like this. First, we're going to use a particle system with the FumeFX plugin inside of Maya. Let's go ahead and get started. So we need to create a fuel source for our explosion. We need to make sure we're in the FX tab before we try anything else, or we won't be able to find the drop-down menus we need. To create a fuel source, click on End Particles, then Create Emitter. To make sure that our explosion doesn't start from an infinitesimally small point, change the emitter type to volume. Since we're going to have a very short burst of particles, we want to bump up the particle rate to 7500. Move the slider on the timeline to frame 5 and create a keyframe for our particle rate. Now move to frame 6 and create another keyframe with the particle rate set to 0. While we're at it, let's change our timeline frame length to 200 to give our simulation enough time to render. We want our explosion to go upwards, so we'll change the X direction to 0 and the Y direction to 1. Set speed randomization to 0 0.5 and change the volume shape to sphere. Now, change to side view so we can see the particle emitter more clearly. We want to change the Y scale to 0 0.5 and change the Y translate by 1 unit. Now, scroll down and change away from center to 10 and along axis to 5. We can see this arrow change to show the direction the particles will travel in. Now, go back to Perspective View. Go to Window, Outliner, and select End Particle 1. In the Attribute Editor, select the End Particle Shape 1 tab, and under the Lifespan menu, change Lifespan Mode to Random Range. Then change Lifespan and Lifespan Random to 0.25. So if we go back to the start of our timeline and click Play, we can see that we have a little particle explosion. At the moment, it's not very interesting, so with our particles selected, we want to click on the Fields and Solvers menu, then add a turbulence field. With this field selected, we want to change the attenuation to zero, because we want the turbulence to be in effect for the entire time our particle system is running. We also want to bump up the magnitude to 100, and set our frequency to 2. Now that we have our particle system looking good, we want to cache the particles. This means that Maya won't have to recalculate the position of all the particles, because we've saved their position data somewhere on the computer. To cache the particles, make sure our particle system is selected, and click and cache, create new cache, and object. Now it's time to start our simulation. So with our particles selected, open the Fume Effects tab and create a new Fume Effects source. Lower the icon size so it's not distracting. Then we're going to scroll down to change a few more settings. Make sure Show and Viewport is checked, so we can see the explosion in real time. Then change the particle radius to 0 0.5, so that the circles are overlapping just a bit. Change the velocity multiplier to 5 to speed up the simulation and the smoke amount to 4. Now, click on Create Fume Effects Volume in the Fume Effects tab. Before we do anything else, we need to make sure that our particle system and turbulence are linked to the Fume Effects Volume. Click on this icon to open the Fume Effects Relationship Manager and highlight the particle source. Once we've done that, we'll change our spacing to 0 0.2 to give the explosion some better resolution. In order to make the simulation area expand as our simulation expands, set the boundless values to X both, plus Y, and Z both. Let's run a simulation to see what we get. It looks pretty good, but it's a bit bland, so we'll want to scroll down to the simulation drop-down menu to change up some settings. In the General tab, set Time Scale to 2 to speed up the explosion, and set Advection Stride and Vorticity to 0.7 to add more small details to make the explosion seem larger. In System, set X Turbulence to 1 for now. We'll keyframe the time scale and turbulence later in the tutorial. In the turbulence noise panel, change the scale to 5, frames to 12, and max out the detail. This is to add a bit of interest to the fireball in the middle. To make the explosion interact as if there was a floor blowing, we'll change the blocking sides to negative Y. Now we need to change the fire itself. We want a lot of heat and color in our explosion. So in the fuel tab, we'll change the ignition temperature to 50, burn rate down to 5, burn rate variation to the max, and we also want to increase heat production to about 30. With such a low burn rate though, we'll need to increase expansion to 6 to have enough fire. We also need to add a nice amount of smoke, so we'll check Fire Creates Smoke and set smoke density all the way up to 80. We also want to set dissipation strength down to 0.1 in the smoke tab. In the extra tab, select Wavelet Turbulence to add a bit of extra interest. Let's give this a render. Since we haven't keyframed the turbulence and timescale yet, it looks a bit wild. We need to scrub to frame 5 of our timeline, then right-click on our timescale property and click Add Keyframe. 
Now, scrub to frame 15, change the value to 1, and add another keyframe. We want to do a similar thing with our turbulence. Scrub to frame 5 again and add a keyframe for X turbulence. Now scrub to frame 10 and change the turbulence all the way down to 0.01, then add a keyframe. Now let's give this a render and see how it's improved. It's definitely looking a lot better. It's got some really interesting shape to it now. Next we need to fix the colours to make it look like a real explosion. We'll open the Rendering Settings tab, and under Fire, we'll open the Fire Colour tab. Adding colour isn't an exact science, so it's best to mess around with the colour gradient until you feel it looks decent, but generally, you want it to be a gradient from dark red to bright yellow. That looks pretty good, so we'll open up the Fire Opacity tab now and change the opacity to be a bit more gradual and rounded. Then under the Smoke Colour tab, we'll change the smoke gradient from dark grey to a lighter grey. We also want to change the opacity to about 1.6. Now we'll change Cast Shadows and Receive Shadows both to True. Then under the Illumination tab, set Multiple Scattering to True, with a falloff of 5. This allows the fire to bleed into the smoke, creating a more realistic look. Now that we have our explosion simulated, it's time to render it. First, we need to position the view so that you can see the whole explosion when we render. Then we change to the rendering workspace. At the top of the screen, we click on the Render Settings icon. Name it whatever we want, and make sure to change the number of frames rendered to the number of frames we've simulated. Once we've done that, we just click Render, Batch Render, and we wait for it to finish. Now that the render is finished, we need to import our rendered footage into Adobe After Effects for some extra colour correction and compositing effects. So first we're going to do some colour correction to make the explosion look a bit more realistic. We'll add the hue and saturation effect by searching for it on the right side of the screen, then dragging it onto our footage. First we switch to the red channel and shift it just a bit to the left. We also want to increase the saturation a bit and decrease the lightness. Then we switch to the yellow channel and decrease the saturation, but increase the lightness to about 20. This is to create some bright parts in the middle of our flame, but we don't want it to all be bright, so we want to contract the selection area a bit just to isolate some of the yellow hues. Next we want to make the really bright parts of the explosion glow, so create a new adjustment layer above the footage by right clicking on the timeline. Add a glow effect to the adjustment layer. Set the threshold to about 70 and the glow radius to 100, then change the glow operation to screen and the glow colors to A and B colors. Then set color A to a lightish orange and color B to a darker orange. Then duplicate the glow effect change the threshold to 60, glow radius to 300, and intensity to 0.5. The last thing left to do is a bit more colour correction. Add a curves effect in a new adjustment layer, and move the left side of the curve a bit below the diagonal to darken the smoke and highlight the fire a bit. Once we're happy with how it looks, all we need to do is go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue, and click Render. This explosion can be added to any scene easily, as the background is transparent, and if we want it to finish after the smoke clears, all we have to do is run the simulation for longer. A massive advantage to creating your own explosions, instead of using pre-made explosions, is you can customise them however you want, and you can even view them in 3D space from multiple angles. Good luck, and I hope you learned something useful in the last 10 minutes of this tutorial.